Hey everyone, it's me Rika Bandens and welcome to another food diary of 365 food diaries in this year where I aim to show you what I ate a year ago and what I eat now opposed to each other because I want people to see the vast difference between pseudo recovery, quasi recovery and real recovery and I'm kind of exposing myself in these videos and if your goal is recovery these are the videos for you to watch my tip for you you're going to get the most benefit out of this video if you grab some snack now you, you pause this video don't go away you don't go to another video you pause this video you get some snack or a meal like anything the thing that your brain wants most nothing that the eating disorder is pleased about and then you're watching my video because my videos can kind of act as a kind of permission for you to eat which at some point you are going to have to be able to give yourself but for now you can you can benefit from that and use that benefit for your good and really make progress watching is not enough watching my videos is not enough but together with you taking action you're going to like on the you are on the road to full recovery okay 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 let us begin so this is oh and don't forget to watch my video that i also made today i'm uploading two videos then the topic of today was am i eating meat and it's two videos daily don't forget that so always check in into the other video as well okie dokie so we have the coffee thing in the morning then the yogurt thing with the berries and we have the <laughs> quasi um chocolate cake kind of but it was still really a big achievement for me as well because i was so afraid of cacao um i used to be so sensitive and eating it anyway even though i was so convinced my brain made me so convinced that it's so harmful for me and too stimulating and just toxic and a neurotoxin and like so acidic and the acid base balance will be out of whack and uh, out of whack and that that's like uh, it was really a challenge for me um yeah and i love that actually i had i had a chocolate oatmeal today as well but like maybe like it's like i don't even care how many calories but um like the calorie density is at least double as high as this one because i just put so little water and yeah it just blows my mind to see this i just wanted to have volume in my belly just for the sake of it so i could be like so i could convince myself and bullshit myself that I'm never hungry, so I eat enough, and yeah, so. But if you eat enough, is determined by how many calories you eat, not by the volume you eat. It's like, you're kidding yourself if you think about it otherwise. Okay, let's see, what is this? Oh yeah, <laughs> I remember. It, these are vegan meatballs. You can see it here. Vegan meatballs, I had these, and these were kind of my fear food challenge for that day. I was doing a program at that, yeah, a meal plan program at that time, um, which I talked about already. Um, it was by a way too healthy, and for my personal situation, it didn't really, like, it didn't really help me much in the end because it was so overly focused on whole food and healthy food and just being 100% vegan and but at the same time you know it was a little bit contradictory at the same time it did encourage me to eat something that I was afraid of because yes the, you know they're saying yes uh, we do not want to have fears of any kind and so it's a little bit contradictory but so that was something that I just kind of didn't understand but what it did help me with was actually going for like the, the task for me was every day i face something that i'm afraid of and so this is with oil which i was super afraid of and like all kinds of chemical stuff real meatballs 
and to be in the same topic as I am today in my topic video, um, like if I eat meat, they would have not been an option for me there. And like ethically, they are still not an option for me. But then again, if my ethics also include myself and my survival and my health, then yes, they have to be included for me right now. But uh, at that point it wasn't. And so this was my my usual lunch. But as you see here, there is nuts. Oh yes, and it's not only walnuts, it's almonds and hazelnuts. And this freaked me out actually. Um, but I stepped up my game here and it's soy flakes and all kinds of nuts here. And then I, do I put it on the top? We'll see. <laughs> I was so, like, this was so scary for me, especially the very first steps, guys. They are so scary. I get it. They have to be done. And I promise you, it's getting easier. It's getting easier day by day. Um, but still, it's going to feel like, like for me, it, uh, everything was super, super heavy for maybe half a year. Mm, until the weight gain had happened and then it was just easy and it wasn't like the weight gain wasn't bad but it was very bad in the beginning um like my perception it was so bad um okay so this was the same dinner we had the last night i added some parsley yes it's like semi-challenging, semi-challenging, because I just felt like, I mean, I didn't have control about what was exactly in there, but still, it's very, it was still kind of a whole food, um, safe food for me. And then, but then I challenged, uh, like our flatmate, she made this, how do you say? Yeah, it's kind of kind of ravioli style, but in an Indian way, <laughs> and they're very spicy. I also had some of this um, salad with soy yogurt and some herbs, and this was also with oil, like pretty much also the dough and everything. And she offered us some, and I wanted it, and so I said, "Well, this is also going to something that." I'm just going to try and challenge. This is exactly what I ate one week ago. It is a bun with chocolate chunks in there and oranges. You will see it more here. Here we also have um, cream cheese. This is a coffee latte. This is a pudding. It's vanilla and chocolate together. And then I also put Nutella there in case I wanted more, like in case the chocolate was enough. Because the other one I had before, like uh, some days ago, as you saw in the video, it wasn't chocolatey. Not really. Like it, it just missed the chocolate. And so it lacked the chocolate. And so I, I just was prepared <laughs> just in case. Battery sufficiently charged. Thanks. Um, this... Oh, but this was very chocolatey, as you guys can see. Really good, a really good thing, yeah. Then I also had the chocolate and vanilla pudding. And guys, I just take whatever I feel like. And the key is you have to surround yourself by fear foods, surround yourself by challenges. Because in the moment where you crave it, you have to have it near you. We want to do the opposite of Dr. Lyle, of the opposite of the pleasure trap, where he encourages everyone to um, just not have anything unhealthy around in the environment, and so you cannot eat it. Because it, it, when it's in the house, it's in the mouth. And it's like, well, yeah, duh, that's, that's the point of it all. Um, I made it my challenge and my task to do the opposite of that and be, always be surrounded by it. And you know, I would never have believed you if you had told me that I would be like I am now where everything, like the biggest fear foods of my, that used to be my biggest fear foods, that they are in my house and I just totally forget about them, like that they're even there. 
don't think of them. And when I think of them, I eat them. And it's like, wow, it's just, I thought I was the unicorn and the exception where that doesn't work, but it works, guys. It works. Take my word for it, okay? And um, yeah, I, I bought all of the fear foods I possibly could at the beginning of my recovery. And the, the expiry date, yes, it's long over, but nothing spoiled so far, so everything fine. I just had to do it for me personally. Maybe this inspires you to do the same. And guys, I'm not kidding. I guess it was about, well, it was a lot of money. Let's put it that way. Um, I might talk about it in a different video, but I just was like, I am taking whatever we, we were prioritizing this financially, even my ED recovery that I can buy all of these things. Okay, this is a screenshot from, one week ago, uh, it's by Freely. Love my new handmade by me crochet top. Or crochet, I think crochet. Am I, that's nice, like with a crochet top. But the thing is like, yes, um, next one. She says, be proud of your homemade efforts. And it, it's so ironic because that is also valid for how she feels about her apps. These are also homemade. She's proud of her homemade efforts and I don't know it's just a little bit it's become a little bit cringy for me to see influencers not only her but um always pretending like oh this is just a side effect the weight loss and the abs and my physique and actually it's only about the animals and no like obviously it is very much at least as much about your physique and your abs and your flat belly just as much about as about the animals if not much more even like because your whole existence both in reality and on social media is about your flat belly like how this is at the center of your existence this is what you portray to the world as if it is the most important thing and that is just something <sighs> i also had this desire to show everyone like i can eat so much and look at my flat belly it's yeah okay i think i said enough okay this is kate noel big fan follow her she's a model and she gave up dieting and restriction and so this says not so hard consequences of restricting and then this says not thinking anything is funny <clears throat> i was there forgetting everything i was there constipation and bloating oh yes craving Craving apathy and sadness. Yeah, exactly. Like you kind of, you kind of don't want to let go of sadness and apathy and you're kind of self-pitying yourself. Um, dry skin slash hair slash nails slash vagina. Mm -hmm. Speaks for itself. Body aches and pains. Having irrational fears, nightmares, always thirsty slash always peeing mm -hmm. skin sc scarring easily bad breath yes and this isn't your solution guys it's not i'm fully there with her this was my breakfast we're going back like this again it is this <laughs> artificial banana milk with one percent of banana and but i had to challenge it all kinds of milk guys this like the meat i was talking about in the topic video today I, it just has to happen okay if i want to be able to maybe at some point to 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 approach veganism in any way possibly at a possible point in time then i just have to go through all of these because i can only go there and be healthy at the same time once i have fully and 1000 percent recovered from my restrictive eating disorder i'm not willing to give my life back to the eating disorder and so and that is ethical guys it is ethical to survive it is ethical and so Köln, these are, this is the Köln Schoko Hafer Müsli. It was also one of my favorites when I was a child. I used to eat loads and lots like bowls of this muesli. And um, I, this was a new one that I opened. So it's not the granola, but a different one. And I added banana and this milk. A huge plate. I'm so, it just, 
and more cacao, it just makes me so happy to yeah, to do this, to be able to do this. Then peanut butter. And I like how is it even gonna be when all of the fears are completely gone? Then bananas, I had two of them. This is a screenshot by diet.culture.rebel on Instagram. Highly recommend this one. Um, she's a registered dietitian. When someone asks how I keep so many fun foods at home without wanting to eat them 24 seven or binging, and she has some Reese's cereal there. Oh no, it's ice cream. She says, so sounds weird, but I stopped dieting and gave myself permission to eat all food. Yeah, pretty much can relate to that. Um, and you, like, at first you feel like all of the power, all of the food has all the power over you, but then you, like, if you push through, if you keep doing it and not restrict in any way, shape or form, then you are going to get to the point where there's no power over you anymore. You don't feel addicted to them anymore and you feel this food freedom that I have now. And it's like, yeah, they don't call your name anymore, all of these foods, right? You do not have to keep them out of your environment in order to not eat them. And it's like, you can eat them anytime you think of them, anytime you mentally want some, even though you're not physically hungry, you can have some. And that is how you get to that food freedom. I always thought when I read that, well, that is like that is nuts. Like that, that's not going to work for me. It's like I'm, I'm more of a food addict. Maybe like Chef AJ. Yes, I cannot. I, my body just cannot deal with these addictive foods. And it's not that way. It's not the way, guys. Not for me. And I'm convinced that, like, I cannot know. But I'm convinced personally. I am convinced that all. No one would feel, would have to feel like this, that they are addicted to this. I think only because of restriction, people feel like they are addicted to junk foods. And I would highly think that that would also be the case for Chef AJ. Because if you have to restrict calories in order to maintain your weight and you're not allowing your body to take over all of this process and, you know, maybe overshoot, maybe, you know, for, just take all the control over what your ideal weight is in in its perception, then um, you you wouldn't have to feel like this anymore. Um, because then all of the hunger cues, like the energy deficit is not there anymore and then your brain would also not make you eat all of these things anymore. And so this dietitian says, um, now I have food freedom. I have made peace with chips, cookies, chocolate, ice cream. Ice cream, this is the caption of the post. All the foods that diet culture labels as bad. I have these foods in my house and I don't think about them at all. Same with me. In fact, I forget they're there now. Like, uh, besides, like, unless I want one and then I just eat one, but it's not like, oh gosh, I want these and they are there and I cannot have them. Uh, in fact, I forget that they are there now. I don't binge on these foods anymore. My hunger cues are back. I can listen to my body and trust it to know that it's hungry. Yep. Can also um, recommend her, it's Rebecca Jane. I think she also has a YouTube channel. I think I'm going to restrict my calories and focus on the number on the scale. The next one, it says, so she looks uh, behind that door where those things await her. Isolation, slowed metabolism, unbearable catastrophizing. Oh yes, personality goes missing, suddenly a liar. All of these things happened to me. I could do a video on each of them. Um, yeah, so maybe some of you can relate to that as well, can identify. We had some Asian noodles there for the night. And that is where I challenged the meat again, even though I'm not specifically craving it, but I know I have to keep up with uh, recovery and I cannot neglect that. Once it's in, it's in. Once I challenged it, it's in. And so because I got the comment, like watch my topic video of today, if I'm eating meat, I said, well, I'm just gonna do it just for the heck of it. I just have to make sure it's not because I'm afraid of it because I, I felt like, oh yes, I can feel something that my eating disorder is glad about it that I'm not uh, eating it. And that is where I knew, okay, we're just going to do this just in case. So this is a beef burger, 100% beef that I had frozen. And I just added it to that one because it sounded really good. 
and that's tahini and kikkoman like soy sauce some mung bean sprouts and pistachios pistachios and peanuts and then lots of tahini and some tomato this is a screenshot from Elle Tyler. I don't know, she used to have a very severe eating disorder. She's very popular on YouTube also, and she used to be in the very fruity, high carb, whatever, volume eating thing as well in the beginning. And she's very popular. And I don't know, you know, guys, she seems to be so like living such a great life. And then she posts something like this. And it's like, um, I've slowed down on the distance I walk compared to last year. I didn't even do a walk today, just in and out of stores. And this thing shows 20,000 steps. It is not okay, right? It's like, you're kidding yourself. Yeah, like, I, that's a problem. <laughs> Okay, guys, it's a problem. I just wanted to share that with you because we, we can justify ourselves. Well, I, I didn't even walk. I don't exercise. I just happen to just have to walk that much. Like if you want to recover, if you don't want to be um, a, a exercise bulimic, then you do what you have to do in order to reduce your step. You do what you have to do to just sit down your ass. <laughs> you cannot just Keep doing this i'm not judging her i don't know what's going on with her and all of this just sharing my warning signals here okay i also added some sriracha here i hope you find this video helpful give this a thumbs up i want to know if you want me to keep doing these if you're interested in my journey from last year and i see you next video bye